So do you have no design skills, but you still want to make amazing professional looking graphics? Let me show you how to use Canva. If you like this video, make sure to like and comment below. You can also follow me on Twitter and TikTok. And if you'd like to be able to interact and engage with me real time, you can follow me on Twitch and YouTube where I do streaming every week. And if you're a streamer or content creator, make sure you click the link below to elevated.media. That's my company where I do coaching, mentoring, and offer other services with other people on the team to make you better as a creator. So Canva is an amazing tool and they offer both free and paid plans. But everything I'm going to show you today can most likely be done under the free plan. When you first log on to Canva, you're going to see a ton of options and things you can do. There are documents, whiteboards, social media posts, or they're going to be more specific things like Facebook posts, YouTube thumbnails, YouTube banners that you can create. If you click on the left hand side of the screen on templates, you're going to see a list of all of the different types of templates that they have to offer. The point of Canva is it's going to have a lot of professionally created assets that you can use and modify slightly to make your project look fantastic and look like it was done by a real professional. I, for instance, have used Canva and their YouTube thumbnails to create all the thumbnails for my YouTube videos. And while templates are a fantastic way to start, and I have a feeling a lot of people do, you can also start from a blank drawing. To do that, you're going to want to go to the right and you want to click on custom size and type in a size for the canvas that you want to use. I took 1920 by 1080 and I click create design. I use 1920 by 1080 because that's the standard size for the size screen that I'm showing my content on. Once this loads, you have a lot of options you can work with. You have templates, you can scroll down, you can type in anything you can think of and it's gonna come up with some templates. You can go down to elements, which is all of the free assets and videos and images and audio sounds that you can use to include in your project. If you're using the free version, you're going to have about 1 million or so assets that you can use. If you're using a paid version, which is $12.95 per month, you're going to be able to get access to over 100 million assets. You can also upload things to Canva, such as videos, images, and audio. And if you want to use assets from other projects that you've created, you can actually access those other projects and bring in slides to your current project so you can reuse certain elements from that. What we're going to do right now is we're going to create a new starting screen for my YouTube channel. So I clicked on templates under design and I'm going to scroll down until I find a template that I might want to use. It doesn't have to be an image. It can also be a video. I'm going to go ahead and use this video right here. And you see there are a few different options. I'm going to pick the one that says welcome and drop that on here. As you can see, there are a lot of elements that are animated and the background is animated as well and but there's some text here that i can manipulate and that's what we're going to do right now so i could go ahead and replace welcome to say elevated since that is the name of my chant my channel or if i wanted to i could go and grab an asset that i have already uploaded with the logo that i've made previously so to do that i'm on the left hand side i'm going to go down to where it says logos and then I'm going to select one of the assets that I want to use. Let's use this one that's all white and gray. As you can see, it drops it right on top of it. One of the cool things with Canva is you can actually change the positioning of the layers. So what I can do is I can grab the original text and I can go up to position on the right hand side and I'm going to say backward. So now when I move these, it should be over the text. So now I can do what I need to. Now, I really don't know if I need this, but I'm going to put it down out of the way for now. And what I'd like to do is I want to shrink this box so it is right as tight as it can get to it, which gives me a little bit of leeway when I want to resize it in terms of it running off the edge of the page. And when I'm dragging this around, you can see there are purple little guy lines that pop up as I'm moving around. And that tells you where you are in terms of the centering of the page, both horizontally and vertically. So when I have solid lines like that, that's going to tell you that I'm right in the center of the page. So I'm going to let it go right there. Now I'm going to take the text that I had modified before. I'm going to drag this up. Let's move hello out of the way. And I want to get this centered and I'm going to replace this and type in welcome. Enter to. And now I want to drag this up a little bit to create a little bit of spacing between the logo and the text. I think that looks pretty good. And I can actually delete this down here because I'm not going to need it. Let's add a little bit of color to this. So I'm going to go and I'm going to grab another 
asset I have uploaded previously, um, another version of my logo. And I'm going to, again, shrink this down. This isn't something that's necessary to do. I just tend to do this because it makes it cleaner when I'm working on it. So I'm going to resize that until it is the right size. Go right over that other eight. And now we're going to go ahead and we're going to change the color of the welcome to text. So it is in the background a little bit more. I don't want it completely hidden, but I want elevated to stand out a little bit more. So we're going to do that. Now there's a lot of effects that you can do to text when you type it in. If you look at the top bar, there is your font selection screen, your font size, your font color, bold italic underline. You can also change the alignment of it. You can add bulleting. You can actually change spaces. So I can change the, the spacing between the letters or the lines if you have a paragraph. Or I can go ahead and hit effects and there are different things that I can do to the text. Uh, if I add a shadow in, you can see that it drops a little shadow back there. Lift adds a little bit of a, a darkened area underneath it, which really helps it pop from the background if you have a background that is lighter. Um, you can do hollow, which really changes it to empty out the insides of that and just have the outside border of letter. Space looks kind of similar to that, except what it does is it it's a duplicate of the text and it offsets it just a little bit, which you can go ahead and change the background color of that as well. Um, echo is something very similar to the previous one. You can see that it adds two additional layers, each offset from the original layer. You can do a glitch, which adds a pink and a bluish color, which allows it to look like it's 3D. There's neon, which in this, with this uh, background, you can't really tell how much it changes already. But if I go and change the color of this to a pink, you can see it's very soft and it almost looks like it's glowing around the edges. So it's kind of cool. And then finally, there's a background. What this does is it adds a solid background right around the text that you have created. You can also change the coloring of this. If I wanted to make that white, I could go do that. Now there's a background. No matter what I type here, it's going to increase the size of that background. But we're going to go back. We're going to go back to hollow. Now let's just let's do space, and we're going to change the background color to white. That really should help that pop a little bit. And it looks pretty good. Now this is a video. So if I were to drag this into Streamlabs, I would just want to set this up on a loop, but would continually show during my starting screen. If I wanted to change the length of this to decrease the file size, for instance, or to fit into some other format, if you also look at the top bar, you have the ability to cut. And what this is doing is this is editing the length. So I could increase the length of this video if I needed to, or I could decrease it to whatever I needed to. But let's cut it down to three seconds just for demonstration purposes. And if I wanna see what this looks like full screen, there are ways to do that as well. When your art is all done, if you want to download it, you just go up to share and you hit download. And now you can select the format you want it to come out as, and then you hit download. If you had more than one slide, which I'll show you in a second, let's go back here and we're gonna add a page. And it doesn't really matter what we do, but now we have two pages. So we're gonna go back up to share and I'm going to hit download. And now you see that it adds another box called select pages. So I can select all the pages or any of them that I want. When I hit done, I would hit download. If I wanted to download a, an image with a transparent background, I would select ENG. And now you have additional options, transparent background, compress file for lower quality. I would hit background and then I would select my PNG image and then I would hit download and it would come out with no background. So you would see just the elevated part and the other part would be missing. During this part as well, you can actually increase the size of it if you need to scale it for whatever reason. Next, we're gonna go back to the home page and we're going to create a template that you can use for your short form videos on YouTube Shorts and TikTok. Creating a template is just the same as creating any other document from scratch. I'm gonna to go to custom size. I'm gonna type in 1080 by 1920 and I'm gonna create design. So here's my canvas. Now I have uploaded videos in the past, so I'm going to select one of the ones that I have uploaded just so I can get placement for the elements the I'm gonna add. For you and let me set this as background. So now it's taking up the full length, assuming that's the size that I wanted to cover. So now I can go ahead and start adding elements to this to make it look like I would want it to look like. So one thing I've done is I have dropped a box onto here and I have a position at the top. I'm gonna 
hit control C and control V to make a copy of this. I'm gonna drop it at the bottom. For TikTok, you know that you can't really put anything down there because there's text that's shown on the bottom of the screen. So I like to approximately block that out so I know what space I'd have to work with with the video. I change that to black. Actually, I'm gonna take my video, I'm gonna detach this from background because I want it to shrink this a little bit. But one thing I'd like to do here is I want to take this box and I want to put it forward so it's on top of it because I want to make it a little bit transparent. So I'm going to hit the transparency slider up here. I'm going to drag this a little bit down to maybe about say 50% and that's going to show what the video will look like behind there. So now if I go ahead and set this as background again, you can kind of see, it's hard to see because they're both black, but there is a transparent layer. If I change this to a different color, say white, you can more easily see that it is on top of there and, and it'll show a little bit. Now, this is a good thing to do, in my opinion, because it allows you to put a nice little background against the text that TikTok adds on there or YouTube. So for the top box, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna change that to black. And again, I am going to put a little bit of a transparency in here, not quite as much. And I'm going to go down and I'm gonna grab a logo and we're gonna make this for elevated. So let's grab the white one, click on it and it drops it right onto the canvas for us. Shrink that up. And then I'm going to go and drag it onto here. Now, this example might look a little funny because the video that I grabbed, I already did this in the background, but for demonstration purposes, this is how you would set it up. And once again, I'm going to go and grab this again for demonstration purposes. If I really was going to use the white elevated with the pink eight all of the time, I would simply go ahead and make a new logo, but let me go in reposition this so you can see exactly how it should go and I can also use the arrow keys if I want to get more precise positioning that looks pretty good one other thing you can do in canvas really cool is if you click some object and then you hold shift and click another object they are now in a container if you hit group up on the right hand side of the menu bar now you can use them and resize them as if they were one thing so let's say that I was good with this. So this is the format that I want to apply to some videos. I would go ahead and I would hit select the uh, video. I will detach it from the background. I will hit delete. You can see that the white background sort of disappeared, but it's, it's still there. And if I was satisfied with this, I could go up to share. I would click on brand template and I could decide where I wanted to put it but I'm gonna leave it in brand template. I'm gonna hit publish. And now it's a template that I could use. If I wanted to use it immediately, again, I would go up to share. I could download it. I would hit transparent background as a PNG and I'm gonna hit download. And you're gonna see in the bottom right-hand corner, it's gonna show you the process, the progress that it's making download. There's one more thing I'm gonna show you today and that's how to use a previous project in a new project so that you can borrow elements for that. In order to get started, we're gonna go and click create design. I'm gonna hit custom size. I'm gonna select 1080 by 1920. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make a starting screen for mobile. So I'm gonna go into projects on the left-hand side, into designs, and I'm gonna select the one that I made for the starting screen. I'm gonna click here, and because there are multiple pages, it gives you a chance to add them both or one at a time. When I click one, it's going to add it on there. It's gonna automatically resize it. If I was good with this, I could go with it, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna manipulate it just a little bit. So it already has centered the welcome to and elevated, which is cool. I really just want to move some of the other assets into different positions on the page just to make it a little bit more custom. And now I actually want to resize them. I want both of these circles, spinning circles to be the same size. So I'm gonna click on them both. And now I'm going to drag so they're much bigger. I'm going to deselect them and now I'm gonna drag them back on the page. You can that and then I'm going to click on these two and I am going to increase the size of those as well and we'll drag them back on here so that you can see them and then I'm going to hold the left mouse button and I'm going to go over both welcome to and elevated and I'm going to increase the size of that just a little bit now I'm going to reposition them a little bit until I can see that it's in the center and there is the line that I'm looking for so that it is completely centered. So now I have a welcome screen for any mobile live video that I did. Again, I could go up and I could turn this into a template, but this isn't really appropriate for a template. 
I'm just going to download this as an MP4 and good to go. If you like this Canva tutorial and you'd like to see more, please drop what you would like me to demonstrate in comments and I will be sure to make a new one in the very near future. But as always, thanks a lot for hanging out. Be smart, stay safe.